Okay, Jonathan. Last time we talked, we spent uh, quite a bit of time on your situation immediately after you left your house and you were erased from society. I'd like to go back to before that and understand a little bit more about something that really intrigued me from your book, which is your communication with Freddie when you describe how he changed the room you were in to an ethereal place in space and imparted a message to you. So I would like you, if, if you would, to describe that experience in a little bit more detail and talk about the kind of communication we had with the creature. Okay, well, first of all, that point, uh, that reference, that input of information that Freddie bombarded me with was in a semi-dream feeling, but it wasn't a dream state. I was awake, I was standing in front of him, and from time to time I felt like a fire hose of information was being inputted to me. Where, where literally I had no control. In fact, it was so powerful that it gave me like a massive migraine headache. And little by little, I actually think that Freddy recognized that I could not handle the capacity and slowed down the information. So I believe he was much more intelligent than I was in recognizing his ability to change to try to communicate with me in a, in, if nothing else, a, a picture form. This was not a word communication. This was more of statements made as impressions, mind impressions, that truly represented thousands of images that I have no idea what 99% of it means. And it's extremely perplexing and and ang I, I feel angry that I can't figure out more of this. But I wasn't with him at that time long enough to really discern, you know, what some of it meant. And, and one of the uh, the very fascinating things about it, uh, the experiences Jonathan imparted to me as we were working um, through a thousand pages or more of documentation. Um, one of the very fascinating, interesting, and intriguing parts of uh, what occurred during his communication state with Freddie, with, uh, um, with him, is the fact that Jonathan went somehow back um, to experience certain things over again, um, particularly sights, sounds, and smells. Like uh, I, I felt like like my life. You've heard people say that their life flashed before their eyes, before their mind's eye. Um, maybe you know, in a, in a near-death experience, this was like that. This situation was like that, as if I was being shown the values in my life that I never had seen before, the minute particles of life that truly had a significant meaning instead of the way we normally look at our lives. Did you feel any um, spiritual experience, any connectedness to Freddy, any, um, did you have any perception of your belonging, sense of belonging in the universe and that you felt that you fit in or did, was it like a Zen experience like I've, I've heard about uh, the Satori experience where... Well first, first I'd like to address the fact that the word spiritual to me has a tremendous amount of dogma with it and I think we, we have to identify what that means in this situation. Spiritual in that it was a tremendously rewarding experience and it filled my my being with something that I had never seen or witnessed or felt before, yes. Religious spiritualism, no. This was like a life lesson, is the best way I can explain it. The contact with Freddy felt akin to to 
was somebody who was reaching out to me and saying, you are part of all of us. That he was literally saying, it's okay what's going on, even though you don't understand. And I will try to to help you understand, even though there was not a formal communication as in vocalizing, there was a definite transfer of information. He was definitely telepathic without question. He inputted to me and I know he felt what I felt. Because when I would feel fear, he would transfer that fear back to me and said, literally telling me I didn't have to be afraid of him. What did you sense from him emotionally? Ah, uh, fear, uh, fear from the standpoint of, I think, sensing that possibly humans are extremely arrogant and unpredictable. Um, and, I, and I'm speculating a lot here because I have to try to discern what I felt and what he felt at the same time. I had been through a situation with him where I had literally caused him physical damage to his body. I felt guilty about that. I felt frustrated. I felt anger about doing it, but also anger about having to be made to do it because I felt I was defending my dog and defending myself. And uh, it was not a conscious decision to, you know, create a, a violent scenario to hurt him. It was purely emotional reaction to the situation I, I saw that I was experiencing. Did he understand that, do you think? I believe he did. I honestly feel that he had a much larger sense of the picture than I did. Did he give you an explanation why he did what he did to Susie? Um, not directly, but indirectly in, in some conceptual vision of what he inputted to me, I felt like he understood that under the circumstances, he knew that I was only trying to fend Susie and or myself. But the, the, the understanding was not like I accept it, but I understand it. Uh, granted, this communication took place, and and it was such a saturation, such a constant saturation, I had to literally back out of this room, out of the garage that this took place in, to be able to regain some kind of mental composure because it was extremely physically taxing to the point of almost exhaustion within five, six minutes at a time. So he told you he understood why you did what you did to him, but you did not get any sense from him that he felt remorse or uh, guilt about what he'd done to Susie or there, were, there was no explanation about uh, his own fear no, there, there was really no uh, um, explanation. Uh, I think that's the best way to, to address it. I didn't feel like he felt he was needing to explain anything. I actually feel initially that he viewed humans as a very, very low subculture of entity and that he was more afraid of our unpredictability than anything. And after he saw through a, some hours of me going in and addressing him and, and trying to sit there and, and watch him, and in some respects that was a communication in itself, just observing each other, he was observing me as much as I was observing him. I think he started to realize that I was not maybe as threatening as what he might have thought the majority of us humans are. And so therefore he started studying me. So it was a learning experience for both of you? Yes, I truthfully believe that.